Welcome to yet another Funky Daily Devotional. Today's verse of the day is Galatians 6, 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. And that's Galatians 6, 1. Today's message is titled, Do Your Own Prank. Is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? He should pray. James 5.13 in the Amplified Bible. The Greek word translated afflicted doesn't mean the result of sickness and disease. It means troubled. If you're in trouble, you need to pray. That's what the word says. Notice it didn't say your pastor needs to pray for you or your friends need to pray for you. It says you need to pray. Too often, uh, we try to find a quick fix to our problems and by asking everyone else to pray for us. There's nothing wrong, of course, with having others pray for you, but you'll never get your life to a place of permanent victory until you begin to pray yourself. The biggest church in the world is Seoul, Korea. It's pastored by Dr. David Cho, and the last I heard it had more than 700,000 members. How did that church grow to be so large? According to Dr. Cho, the key prayer <laughs> chin chin, is, uh, is not just his prayer, but the prayers of his people. Praying is a way of life in the church. They have a place called Prayer Mountain where thousands of people come every day to pray. I once heard Dr. Cho, mother-in-law on television, talking about the emphasis they put on prayer. She said that when their church members are in trouble, when they're having marriage problems or problems in their personal lives before anything else is done, those church members are told to go and pray and fast for 24 hours. We need to do more of that here in our churches in Canada or the United States or Australia or around the world. We need to quit training our people to run around asking others to pray for them and train them instead to do their own praying. You see, if I pray for God to solve one problem for you, you may enjoy success for a while, but then another problem will come along because you'll still be making the same old mistakes that got you in trouble in the first place. But if you buckle down and do that praying for yourself, if you discipline yourself to start searching out the things of the Spirit, you'll get permanent answers. You'll learn how to make adjustments in your life that will keep those problems from cropping up again. If you've ever made Jesus your Lord, you have access to the throne of Almighty God. He has every solution to every problem you'll ever have, and He's just waiting for you to come to Him. So He can give you the answer. It may take some private time alone with Him for you to hear it, but He will never disappoint you. Don't depend on others to do your praying for you. Go personally to the throne of God today. Scripture reading is Psalm 5. So one of the things that I was going to say to you is that... Um, let me think about this for a second. Now I'm forgetting my thing. Oh, I was at Cape and Ray Bible School. I was praying early in the morning. God was getting my mom and me up at the same time uh, to pray. We would call each other. Are you up? Yeah, I'm up too. Oh, God got us up, you know, that kind of thing. And we go and pray. And it would, the times were different. They were like between, I think, three and five, but mostly like five o'clock. We'd be up simultaneously feeling this call to pray. And uh, there I was in the field. Had my hands up, had my hands out, and I was praying to God and praising and worshiping Him. And a bunch of these kids came by from a distance. They were up too super early. And they said, hey! And I said, hey! And they said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying. And they're like, okay! Because they hadn't seen people pray before. They hadn't seen people praise God and be a little bit, I guess, weird. But God's a little bit weird. And that's a discussion I have a lot with people too, is that God himself is, is different than us and strange to us. So yeah, we have to learn sometimes by watching others pray, even what pray or praise or a lot of other things look like, fasting, whatever. Um, it's good to have a good example. Scripture reading is Psalm 5, so I'll start with verse 1. And it always has this title, Psalm 5, for the director of the music, for flutes and uh, Psalm of David. <laughs> I could get flutes to play in the background if I wanted to. I'll leave the birds. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my singing. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. 
In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. You are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you, the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant claim, uh, the arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all wrong, all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men, the labor, the Lord abhors. But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house in reverence. Will I bow down toward your holy temple? Lead me, O Lord, into your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your ways before me. Not a word from their mouths can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave, and with their tongue they speak deceit. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their uh, let their intrigues uh, be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad, and let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor, as with a shield. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, your kindness, uh, your love. I'm repeating myself and your generosity. Thank you, Lord, that, that we can still praise you even through the wicked times and through the hard times and through the good times and through the bad times. Thank you, God, that you are a God who, um, who is fully just and fully righteous, God. Thank you, Yeshua, for washing away our sins and for your mercy and your grace and your kindness. I mean, I think that extends beyond anything that we had ever deserve or ever uh, have earned because we have not earned it whatsoever. That's just the thing. It's just a beautiful gift of the Heavenly Father. So I pray that you would speak into the hearts of men and women alike, Father. Show your love for them and help them to understand that they are made in your image, that they are loved by you and created by you and given breath by you, God. And make us alive again to enjoy life and to be excited about all the cool things around us that we get to do because of you. This life isn't meant to be a bore. It's meant to be exciting because of you and enjoy and also to be um, self-sacrifice to those who are in need around us, whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whether it's housing, whether it's, you know, forms of generosity and kindness or setting the captives free. There's a lot of commands for being uh, Christ-like and uh, help us to go into prisons, God. That's the one that I haven't done yet and I would like to do is to go into prisons and um, bless others. I love you. Lord, I love you with all my heart, and I just pray for a wonderful, blessed day in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray, amen. God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Mwah.